Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. It's your girl Little Latina coming at you with another video. And I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, one, you want to know more about intermittent fasting, how it works, and what you can do to make intermittent fasting even easier for you, or two, you're looking to lose weight and you have just learned what intermittent fasting is and yet again want to learn how to make this easier for you and learn how to do it more properly. Either way, this is going to be a great video for you and for those of you that may not be in either of those categories and don't know what intermittent fasting is but want to learn intermittent fasting is an eating style where you time when you eat so for a certain period of time you will eat as much food as you want and then for the other period of time you will be completely fasting and taking zero calories for the rest so in this video I'm going to be giving you five do's and five don'ts to make intermittent fasting easier and how to make you more consistent with intermittent fasting ultimately just make it a lot more enjoyable experience and my birds are getting really excited so let's get on to it all right so the first thing you should do to make intermittent fasting easier is to drink lots of tea lemon water or water in general specifically when you were in your fasting period so when you were in taking zero calories now when you drink these items during your fasting period first of all they have zero calories so you will not be breaking fast second of all these are actually extremely healthy drinks for you to be consuming they have a whole bunch of antioxidants and green tea is actually really great for oral health so if you have any oral problems or you just want to have nice clean little teeth green tea is going to be great for that as well but what these drinks do for me personally is help keep me full if i'm struggling during my fasting period or if i feel like i'm really hungry or if i just kind of have a craving for something out of nowhere i'll just go ahead and have some lemon water or some green tea since they don't have any calories they're not going to be breaking fast but since they have a flavor to them i'm most likely going to be kind of halting any type of cravings that i have for the moment and plus if you drink a lot of it you can kind of get water bloated so it's just going to keep you fuller and making you feel less prone to having to binge eat or making you less prone to wanting to eat food right away. So this is really great, especially if you were just beginning fasting and you're not used to fasting for a prolonged period of time. And so this is gonna be great for beginners and ultimately just great for your health in general. Now the second thing you do want to do when you start beginning fasting or if you're just fasting in general is to take it slow. This obviously is going to be more effective for people who are just beginning fasting. So if you have never fasted once in your life and the only time you've ever fasted is when you've been sleeping, this is going to be great for you. So don't start immediately with a 16 to 18 hour long fast. Start with something that you can actually count. So do 12 hours, 13 hours. Really start it slow. You don't have to jump right into it from fasting for your sleeping window and then fasting for 18 hours you don't want to do that because you're going to be way less inclined to consistently intermittent fast you're going to be feeling very very hungry since your body's not going to be used to it you're going to actually really hate intermittent fasting and you're most likely not going to stick to it or reap any of the benefits intermittent fasting has so i would highly suggest not just skipping ahead and just going right into it i would suggest gradually shifting to the point where you can easily fast for 16 to 8 hours so that would start basically Basically with a simple 11 to 12 hour fast while you're most likely are going to fill that fast by the time you're sleeping it'll still allow you to gradually shift to a longer fasting period so by the time you're fasting 16 17 18 hours you're not going to be feeling like it's that intense and you're going to be actually really used to fasting so it's not going to have nearly as much as an effect on you now the third thing you want to do when intermittent fasting is to consistently eat throughout your eating window or have three big meals. So what I mean by consistently eating doesn't mean like you're going to eat like every single hour or 20 minutes or something like that. What I mean is whatever you eat throughout the day, consistently eat during those times every single day you're fasting. So if you were to eat at 9 a.m., then eat again at 12 a.m., and then eat again at 4 p.m., you want to make sure that you're consistently eating at those times every single day. So so your body will actually be used to it and so by the time you're fasting you're not going to be like super hungry so if you were to switch up your schedule a lot when you're fasting your body's not going to have a lot of time to adjust to that and there's going to be days when in your fasting window you're going to be so hungry and you're going to be starving and literally hating fasting and wanting to eat super badly and most likely you will break fast and then there's going to be other days where you're going to be perfectly fine and it's not going to bother you at all so this is why i would suggest being consistent as much as possible obviously there's going to be days when you want to eat a little bit earlier or a little bit later that's fine but just mainly stay consistent so eight days out of ten just try to be very consistent 
at the times that you eat so your fasting window will be so much easier and you will not be very inclined to wanting to eat more food to fill that hunger that you might not have fulfilled during your eating window so being consistent is very very important to maintaining intermittent fasting and to just having an overall better experience with fasting all right, now the fourth thing you can do when intermittent fasting is to be realistic. And what I mean by this is don't expect instant results if you've been fasting for a week. You need to give it time, you need to stay consistent, and you just need to be real with it. Understand that you aren't gonna lose weight in a week just from intermittent fasting. You're not gonna reap all the amazing results of intermittent fasting within a few days. You need to give it time, and you also need to know your limits. So if you can't handle fasting for more than 17 hours, don't stay in your 16 hour fasting window and don't overdo it because your body will tell you what it wants what's good for it and what it needs so if your body doesn't need to be fasting for longer than 16 hours then don't fast for longer than 16 hours your body will let you know if you're doing something wrong if you're not taking enough calories if you need to eat more your body will tell you everything that it needs okay so just be realistic and know the signs that your body is giving you and I do have a video somewhere up here that lets you know that you're not eating enough so if you think that during your fasting period you're not eating enough you're not taking enough calories that video up there is going to give you some intense warning signs that you may not be eating enough i also have a video up here on how to intermittent fast you know the beginner's guide to intermittent fasting so if you want to watch that after this you can go ahead and watch that but just mainly be realistic and understand what intermittent fasting is and know your limit that's very important to consistently intermittent fasting and fasting in a healthy way that isn't going to cause your body any pain or any health issues. And the fifth and last thing you want to do to make intermittent fasting a whole lot easier is to eat as healthy as you can throughout the entire time. Now, not only is eating healthy going to fuel your body, give you more energy, give you better skin, make you feel just better in general, help boost the ability to sleep and give you all these benefits, it's also going to make your fasting a lot easier since you're not going to be nearly as hungry during your fasting window as you would be if you were eating tons of sugar, tons of gluten, tons of fats. You're not going to be inclined to want to binge eat when you're fasting because eating healthy foods will keep you fuller for longer and will not leave you as inclined to want to feed a craving during your fasting window. So that's something very important because I can say from my own personal experience, on days that I'm fasting and I eat like junk throughout the entire day, I'm going to be so hungry when I'm in my fasting period and in comparison to days when I'm eating healthy I really am not hungry at all. I will not have any cravings for any junk foods during my fasting period and I will actually be pretty full and I really won't feel hungry at all. So I can tell you if you are eating healthy, one, it's actually extremely good for you quite obviously and two, fasting is going to be so much easier. So just make sure you're eating healthy. Yet again, just 8 out of 10 days if you can eat healthy throughout the entire day, you're going to be fine and you will see the results of fasting. Okay, and now we move on to the five things that you do not want to do if you want your intermittent fasting experience to be enjoyable and to be useful. So the very first thing you want to avoid when it comes to intermittent fasting is to start with a fasting window that's longer than 16 hours. Like I said earlier, you do not want to just start off with a really high number. You want to gradually work your way up there because like I said earlier, if you're starting off with something that you have never done before in a really high number of fasting you're most likely not going to be able to do it you're going to quit right away you're going to really hate intermittent fasting and you just won't allow yourself to see the benefits of intermittent fasting and you really won't understand how enjoyable it is and how amazing intermittent fasting is and all the ways that it can help your body and overall just shape your body to become something completely different or something that you've never had before in your entire life so just make sure you give it time you're gradual with it and you just don't start with a huge fasting period because you're most likely not going to be able to stick to it. All right, so the second thing you want to avoid when intermittent fasting is to eat foods with empty calories. Yet again, if you're eating all these greasy, sugary foods, you're going to basically have a meltdown during your fasting period, especially if you have just started fasting and you've never done it before in your entire life. You're gonna find fasting extremely difficult. You're going to want to binge eat all those foods again when you're fasting. You can maybe fast for a day or two, but on your third, fourth day, you're just going to have that breaking point where you will 
will just binge eat all of those foods, go right back to you and just completely break that fast and most likely feel really bad afterwards and feel like you can't commit to anything, you won't have any consistency and overall it's just not a great experience and it's just going to be leaving you really, really hungry. You're not going to be feeling energized, you're not going to be feeling good in your body, you're not going to be feeling like you can complete anything and you're just going to be very, very hungry and really not enjoying fasting and you're going to be way more inclined to quit fasting immediately after that because you won't believe that it has any benefits so make sure that you try to eat as healthy as you can obviously start gradually from really bad to ending up really good so if you already have been eating really horrendously your entire life just slowly work your way there so this fasting can be so much easier for you and you'll really see the results and actually enjoy the results so much more and the third thing you don't want to do when it comes to intermittent fasting is intermittent fasting solely to lose weight. Now, while intermittent fasting is mainly known for its ability to make you lose weight, that's not its only purpose. And if you're doing something solely to lose weight and for no other purpose, you're most likely going to quit doing it if you're not seeing the results in a very quick amount of time. And intermittent fasting just has so many health benefits and does so many other things for your body just besides weight loss but it seems like a wasted opportunity and a wasted way of viewing something if you only use it to lose weight because intermittent fasting improves your brain function allows you to sleep better not only helps you to lose weight it makes you feel better gives you more energy it has so many more benefits to it than just weight loss and if you're doing something solely to lose weight you're most likely not going to enjoy the experience going to be judging your body the entire time expecting instant results and it's just not going to be a healthy experience and it's not going to be an enjoyable experience and you're most likely not going to stay consistent with it either because if you're not getting the results that you think you should within this certain amount of time you're most likely going to quit it and then not receive any of the other extra benefits that intermittent fasting can give you so never do something solely because you want to lose weight or change your body but always do it just for the overall health benefits and the way it can change your body in more ways than just weight loss or fat loss and the fourth thing you definitely don't want to do when it comes to intermittent fasting is changing your fasting period all the time. So if you start off doing a 16 hour fast for two days and then you change it to an 18 hour fast for the next three and then you change it to a 13 hour fast, that inconsistency is not going to give you the results that you are looking for and most likely will hurt your body more so than it will help it. So always try to stay consistent with the amount of times that you are fasting and usually start lower and then gradually work your way higher. And if you feel like you can't go any higher, just go back one hour or go back two hours to where you were at your prime and were fasting amazingly and just stick to that. You don't need to go any further or any lower. Just stay where you need to stay if you can't handle any higher, if you can't go any lower. So don't change up your intermittent fasting hours all the time. So just try to be as consistent as possible when it comes to how long you're fasting because when you're consistent with your fasting period, your body will have time to adjust to that and your body will really give you the results that it definitely needs. And the best results that intermittent fasting can give you is when you are consistent. So just don't try to mix it up all the time and just find a happy medium for you that will give you the best results and makes you feel the best physically and mentally. And the fifth thing you want to avoid when intermittent fasting is eating a very small meal before your fasting period. And what I mean by this is if you've only snacked throughout the day or if the last meal you had was like three or four hours ago and you only have, let's say, a little strawberry before your intermittent fasting starts, that will leave you extremely hungry. You are going to hate your fasting period and you're most likely going to be extending your fasting window since the last thing that really filled you up was hours before your actual fasting window and that's really going to leave you extremely hungry, extremely annoyed, extremely hangry. You're not going to be enjoying your fasting experience and you're most likely going to end up eating during the fasting window that you've given for yourself anyways and then you're going to break your fast and break any of that progress and just have to restart over again. You're going to feel like you're not committed, you're going to lose that consistency that you had and you're overall not going to enjoy that experience if you want to make intermittent fasting something thoroughly enjoyable for you. So make sure if you haven't ate anything for a while before your fasting starts to have a pretty decently sized meal so you will be feeling really full and less inclined to want to eat a bunch of food during your fasting period so you can stay consistent and stick with intermittent fasting and find it enjoyable and not something that seems like a hassle and something that just doesn't align with you. 
With that being said though, those are the five do's and don'ts with intermittent fasting and how you can make intermittent fasting a much more enjoyable and a much more consistent thing that's actually a part of your life and something that you actually enjoy. So if you found value from this video or learned something new, don't be shy and go ahead and leave a like, comment, or subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it and it would help boost this video on the algorithm so others will have the opportunity to see this video and to hopefully learn something new. But thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day.